you. Let me see that. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sister Simpson. Oh, now, this goes here. Make sure now. All right. Grace. 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 Discovering grace. Um, I want to talk this evening about the two sides of grace. Uh, in our last discussion, and it really wasn't discussion, I was just talking. <laughs> our, uh, we talked about what seemed to be the two sides or the two faces of God, where uh, he on one side is uh, gracious, and on the other side, He's a holy God of just, justice or judgment. Um, a lot of times people call out and cry out for justice. But not understanding God's justice demands judgment. And because uh, he's a just God, and he's holy, he's separate and set apart. And because of that, God has to deal with man uh, or deal with disobedience. He has to deal with disobedience. He cannot leave it dormant and unchecked. If he did, he would not be God. That's why he told us to despise not the chastening of the Lord or uh, get weary, or I believe the scripture says, when, when we have reproved of him. I, I, uh, the point is that it is his love in action. And so one side of God, he seems to enact uh, discipline, correction, reproof. We love the scripture that says that, uh, there we go. We, 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 we love the scripture says the word is profitable for doctrine. Amen. We, we, we apostolics, we, we talk about doctrine. We, we got that right doctrine, don't we? But it's also, uh, it's profitable for reproof. I don't know about that. Correction. And we don't mind a little instruction in righteousness. The Bible says to exhort. Oh, yeah, give me some exhortation. But it also says to reprove and rebuke with all long suffering and doctrine. We want the, the power of his resurrection. Fellowship of his sufferings, not so much. But everything in God has two sides, like your dollar bills that you trust in. Y'all didn't get that. See, on that dollar it says, in God we trust. I tell you what, give me all those dollars then. You trust God. Give, give me your dollars. <laughs> in that dollar bill we trust. And even on that dollar bill that we trust, we know there are two sides to it. There are two sides to a coin. There seems to be two sides of God, and there is. 
if you will, the nature. In discussing grace, there are two sides to grace. There is a denominal world, religious world, that only wants to flip the grace coin on one side. You know, they have these coins, I'm told, I never had one, that they are, uh, they, they're, they're what you call, when you, when you make something uh, fixed, they're fixed, where every time you flip it, it's going to land on heads. Every time, every single time. And there are some people, when they flip the coin of grace, they want it to always land on, on head. They don't want it to land on the other side of grace. And so I want to talk to you, if you don't mind, and if you do mind, I want to talk to you regardless. Sometimes I talk to my wife when she don't mind. Sometimes I talk to her and she minds. Especially when she's doing something. I had one of those honorary moments today. I did everything to pluck her nerves. I did everything to get on her. I was just in a laughing mood. I was just in a joking mood. and that, Everything, I was just, and she just looked like, no! But uh, there's two sides. Now, the good thing about God is there is a good side in grace. And there's a better side in grace. <laughs> and God's going to say a bad side. Both sides are good. Amen. So the two-sided coin of grace. Uh, there are two definitions that signify the grace of God. We talked about them. We discussed them. And you gave the definitions yourselves before I even wrote or read it. You gave, uh, sister, uh, Brother Terrell, could you see me at the service? Thank you very much. That's right. You are, it's, on, it's recorded. It's on. Everybody see me at the service. So you can't say, I didn't hear you. I forgot. All right. So two sides of grace. On the one side of the coin, y'all okay? Y'all with me? Y'all ready to go home? Y'all ready to go home? Somebody in here probably ready to go home. So line. Well, I'm ready to go home, but I'm not going to go. <laughs> On the one side of the coin, the grace of God is the unmerited. Let's say it together. Unmerited. Oh, yes. Now, don't you love that side about God? Don't you love that side about uh, grace? God, give me that unmerited favor because I know I can't earn anything. Amen. We love God's unmerited favor. And, and, and it's almost like you're just walking down the street and all of a sudden God just say, oops. I just put a little bit on you there. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know? Unmerited. I didn't do anything. I just woke up and I just stumbled on God's grace. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know how I got here. You know how you mess up you know, and you're like, I don't know how I got here. Yes, you do. I'm sorry to go here. Girl wallowing around all knocked up. I don't know how I got here. Yes, you do. You most certainly do. <laughs> How did this happen? You want to go back to class? <laughs> I told you I was in a hurry. <laughs> I don't believe grace is an accident. Oh. People will try to make like grace, oh, just something, uh, or, here we go. Now, we know God is good. We, we went over that. He's gracious, and because he's gracious, he endows grace on us. But still, and grace doesn't happen by accident. I, I, I don't believe grace just, you know, God, oh, you know, 
uh, I just happened to stumble upon it because unmerited flavor. I didn't, I didn't do anything to earn it. Well, how did you get it? How do you get grace if you can't earn grace? And if God gives grace to one person and doesn't give it to another, it ceases to become grace. Because it would make, and I'm getting ahead of myself, God a respecter of persons. I am getting ahead of myself. So let me just back up. But we like the unmerited fla- favor. Now this is the grace that saves us. The side that saves us. The unmerited favor of God. This is that initial thing that, but it, don't, don't get ahead of yourself. Stop. We, we didn't do anything to earn grace. We, we, we don't deserve it. We, we understand all that. And, and God is the initiator of this grace. And if he didn't initiate it, no one would be saved. So God has to initiate grace. God has to be the one. And and so the Bible says for all, everybody say all. All All have sinned and come short. Not fall short. Some people say fall short. Fall short of the glory. No. You come short of the glory. In other words, you you don't measure up. We all have sinned. Yeah, I, I, you know, some people kill me where they try to act like they ain't a sinner. Like they came out of the womb, Jesus 2.0. <laughs> Sinless. We all need his grace. But the fact of the matter is, uh, here we go. If all have his saving grace, why is not all saved? Or what is not, is not, yeah. I'm trying to think what I should have said. Yeah. Why are all not saved? Let me throw that English too. Oh. <laughs> the thing is, we all need his grace and it's his saving grace. Could you put uh, Romans 3, verses 9 through 12. Let's read that real quickly. And i got to hurry up already. What then? Are we better than they? You got grace. Are you better than that? Uh, are you holy than thou? Huh? I want to be holy than somebody. I don't care if it's thou, thee, or... The <laughs> What then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise. For we have uh, before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all what? Under. Under sin. You and I need grace because we're all sinners. We all come short. We all have sinned. And we are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Next verse. There is none that understandeth. There is none that what? Seeketh Seek after God. Next, one more, one more. There we go. They are all gone out of the way. Gone out of the way. They are all, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. We all are miserable. Like Paul said, oh, wretched. Somebody say, oh, wretched. That I am. We normally want to say that person is wretched. Oh, wretched man that I am. 
But then he goes on to let us know that we can receive salvation through Jesus Christ. So the next verse says, we are, as we see in the next verse, next verse, I said I wasn't. Oh, I'm on something else. No. Let's go back to uh, Romans 3 and 9. Verse number 3, 12. I think we left off, so we're going to see what happens in the next verse. We're all under sin. There's none righteous, no, not one. All right. There's none that do of good, no, not one. Next verse. Here we go. Look at what it says. Oh, no, that's not, ooh, that's even worse. <laughs> I said the next verse, we're saved by grace through faith. I think I may have messed that up. <laughs> I had to get back to my notes. <laughs> it's getting worse. It doesn't get better. Hey, Amen. I got this uh this statement in here, but maybe it should go in the, oh, I, I see, we see in this, or by this next verse, the verse I'm getting ready to read. <laughs> oh, my Lord. The next verse that I'm about to read, not the next verse that was on there. So the next verse is Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. <laughs> that is so funny. I'm like, I got this right here. So we see by this next verse that I'm about to read, man, we are saved by grace, what? Through faith in Jesus Christ. But by grace are you saved through faith. Not of yourselves is the gift of God. We wouldn't even have grace except what? That God gives it. We wouldn't have faith except that God gives every man a measure of faith. And so we see this first definition is God's unmerited, unmerited favor. Now, that's the good part. That's the thing that saves us because we know we're wretched, right? Say, like, mm-hmm. I mean, there's no good thing in our flesh. Have you ever, you know, thought about it, and you're thinking about salvation, and you're thinking about heaven, and you're just like, oh, I'm just so good? Any takers? Or you got the praying, you're getting into the real prayer, and you thought about yourself? and you really saw yourself outside of the righteousness of God, you're like, oh, my goodness, I don't know how I can be saved. I'm going to tell you like this. If you look at yourself and, and, you, and, and you look at yourself like, okay, you're ready, to, ready for ascension, uh, the, to me, the more I get in the depths of prayer, and I'm talking about it's flowing, I'm praying, and, I, and I'm believing God for some serious stuff. Amen. You see, see, you, the closer you get to God, you don't see your purities. The, the closer you get to God in this state, you realize how far you are. <laughs> you, now, you realize without his goodness, without his grace, and then when I get in that place, I see how wretched I am. I get to thanking God because I'm like, only a God, a powerful God like that can save me. Only through the grace of God can I be saved. It's not my merit, amen. It's not what I do. It's not because I preach. It's not because I teach. It's not because I reach this soul. It's not because I pay my tithes. It's not because I try to live holy. It's not because I don't drink. It's not because I don't drug. It's not because I'm faithful to my own. It's none of those things. The only thing that's going to save me is that I trust in the power and the deliverance of God and his righteousness. Trusting in that, presenting myself, grace, grace. That's the one side of grace. That's the great, that's the side. I love that side of God, unmerited. Man, I, can't, I, I couldn't earn it, thank God. I couldn't earn it because I can't. Could you imagine if you had to earn it? And that's what some of us do. We keep trying to earn it, trying. And, we, and you know what? People who struggle with uh, feeling unrighteous and people who struggle with condemnation and all that, they keep trying to earn God's righteousness. And I'm telling you, when you battle with condemnation, it's because you're trying to earn it. Not condemnation, you're trying to earn salvation. Let 
But there's a, a second side. I'm going to talk a little more about the first side if you permit me, if you don't. I'm going to talk about the second side on the flip side of God's unmerited favor. The second definition of the word, the other side of the same coin refers to the divine life, power, and ability of God flowing and operating through us. I'm going to read that again. See, because you, you really got unmerited favor. I mean, it's just two words. So let me read that again. The other side, because, all, you know, you hear a lot of people that, that, you know, all those commentators, those people, in, 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 you know, in those books, they only talk about unmerited favor. What's, what, what the grace of God is unmerited favor. And then when you read the Bible, you're like, it's got to be more than that. You know, I'm not trying to compl complicate the grace of God, but I'm not trying to ward it down, too. Again, it's not complicated, but it's sophisticated. This, the second definition is the divine life, and I'm going to show you that. And as a matter of fact, there's more to the second definition throughout the Bible than the first, at least in the New Testament. Uh, it refers to the divine life, power, and ability of God flowing and operating through us. You see, you don't just need the grace of God, this unmerited faith. Oh, there it is, the grace. Oh, you need this grace flowing through you. Grace is not complete unless it's flowing through you, unless you can feel its power, unless you can feel the life of grace. It's just, it's not just an umbrella to keep condemnation from you, an umbrella to keep uh, judgment off of you. It's not just a, a license. I got my grace card. I can swipe it anywhere. It's good in all countries, <laughs> even in God's. I got a license. Pull out that. Got one of them new licenses, too. I got a license to see. A lot of people think grace is, it's unmerited favor. And, and, and you know what? This grace, this grace card that we get, it's not like this. See, I can lose this. See, they believe in a grace that you can't lose. I guess it's like a chip. <laughs> Embedded. You can't lose your salvation. Once saved, always saved. And once you get that, that's it. It's a done deal. Amen. You can't strip it off. You can't rip it off. You can't burn it off. Like God would want somebody that don't want him. God is not going to make anyone saved. You know, people who, they, they get saved, they get saved, and they don't want to live for God. They curse God to his face. They serve the devil. They do everything else, but they got that grace card once, so they can't lose out on salvation. That, that don't even make sense exactly. God, I reject you. I renounce you. You know, God, I'm going to do everything uh, totally against you uh, because I got your grace. That makes about as much sense as Satan sitting on the throne of God. And that will never happen. He tried. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand that. Anyway, Paul indicates this second part, the second side. Y'all all right? The, the, the flip side. You know, not the unmerited favor side, but the other. And I believe in unmerited favor, but I don't believe it just stumbles. I believe you find it. Oh, hallelujah. I believe you find the grace of God. <laughs> I believe it's by faith 
that we have access into this grace wherein we stand. Uh, oh, hallelujah. I don't want to get ahead of myself. The second aspect of God's grace is needed in our salvation and in our sanctification. You see, uh, the, the unmerited favor that God gives for me, pulls something on your head, you can say, but let me tell you, I don't, I don't believe in one save, I always say, I believe in three, uh, how can I say, three stages of salvation. I believe you get born again, you continue in him, and then you punch your ticket into heaven. If you don't aboard the plane or the train, you don't get to the destination. And if you are a stowaway, you don't belong in it. You have to get the ticket from the conductor or at the ticket booth. Once you get the ticket, you got to stay on board. You jump off, you don't get there. Three stages. The first stage, you must be born again. Born of the water and born of the spirit. And then you have to walk with him to be led by him and of him. And it was the unmerited, of, uh, the unmerited favor of God that got you the ticket. It was God's unmerited favor that allowed you to get in line and to get the ticket. Amen. You didn't earn the ticket, but you got in line to get the ticket. You had to position yourself and put yourself in a place to get the ticket, to get Get on board. No ticket, you don't get on board. Now, he's willing to give you the ticket, but you must line up to get it. And whatever he do to tell you to get it, get it. That's unmerited favor. That's unmerited favor. You find it. Then you get it. You stay on board. When you get on board, there are benefits. In 2 Timothy verse 2 Timothy verse 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. It took me 3 times to get that right, but I got it right. Sister, this is Raven's Nation. We're praying for him. We're praying for him. Amen. So here we are. Thou therefore, my son. If this is unmerited favor, this, this doesn't make sense. Be strong in the grace that is in Jesus. Well, how can I be strong if it's just unmerited favor? I can't do anything. See, it's strength that uh, on the other side of grace, it's, it's God's power working on you. That word strong there is, the, is a, 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 a form of the word, you know, dunamis, right? Or dynamis. I look, and it looked like it really says dynamis, but we say dunamis. But it's really a why, not a you. But anyway, that's just me look, looking at it. And, but this is in dynamo. Meaning to empower, not, see the word don't, dunamis, meaning power, or it's translated power, but this word means to empower, or to strengthen, and it comes from the root word dynamis or dunamis, which is power. And so he said, be strong or be empowered in grace. Grace can empower you. So when I don't have the power to live and walk in God, grace gives me the power to live and walk in God. Yeah. It's the divine life, power, and ability of God flowing 
and operating through us in order to give us a supernatural power and ability. God, this is God's grace, giving us a supernatural power and ability. Therefore, when we go about, Brother Terry, and we lay hands on the sick, that's the grace of God operating through us. When we speak a word of faith, a word of knowledge, a word of revelation and understanding, that's the grace grace of God working in and through us. When you witness to your co-worker and tears roll down their face, that's not you. That's not your charisma. That's not your personality. That's not, I'm telling you what, that's the grace of God. Grace. You know how you're teaching that Bible study and then all of a sudden something come in your head and pop and then it just starts to flow and, and they say, that's everything. I, I was just thinking about that. I was just talking to somebody about that. How can that be? Because that's the grace of God. Somebody was in the throne room. Huh? Somebody came boldly before the throne of grace huh? and they found grace to help in the time of need. See, we think the time of need, God, I need this. You get grace in the time of need. Huh? When there's a time of need for ministry, huh? that's grace. Huh? When there's a time that somebody need a touch from God, that's grace. When there's a time that somebody need a word of God, that's grace. When somebody need healing, that's grace. God, I can come boldly before your throne. Find grace. Now, we know God's grace is in salvation. In fact, it's, the, it's for me, it's the most important part and aspect. Amen. Hello. <laughs> I believe there's a hell. All I want to do is believe in it. I don't want to go any further than that. I don't want to experience it. I don't want to be firsthand. Oh, no, no. You know how some people say I died and I, oh, no. I don't want any of it. I don't want no purgatories. Not that I believe in it anyway. Amen. Nothing. Grace. I, I'm, I'm going to skip down. <clears throat> See, let, me, let, me, let me cover this. The problem with this false doctrine stuff on grace. Uh, can we go to Ephesians 2 and 5? We might stay here for a minute, and I got to hurry up, and I keep saying it and not hurrying up. <laughs> Even when we were dead in sins, have he given us life, quickened? He quickened us, made us alive together with him. The only way you have life is that you will, so you can't get out of Christ and have life. So being together with him gives me life. Being apart from him, I'm dead again. But no, I got grace. You can't have grace without Christ. And I'm telling somebody to walk away from Christ and they still got grace. If grace and truth came by Christ, when you take Christ out of the equation, you're taking away grace and truth. By grace, and notice, notice this in parentheses, together with Christ, by grace are you saved. Why do people try to make this parenthetical statement? This is in parentheses. Now, now I'm not an English major. I actually took one year of English online, and I, I, I banged a 2.0. I mean, a 4.0 out of it. I impressed my wife. Now, after I finished, I don't know what happened with everything I learned, but, <laughs> but anyway. One thing I do know, by grace, you're saved. You see, that's in parentheses. Is that a standalone sentence? 
Not only is it not a standalone sentence, it's not a standalone fact. In other words, you can't have that by itself. You can't have it by itself in the English, and you can't have it by itself when you're trying to build a doctrine. It's, it's, it's like a second thought. I'm letting you know something. And, oh, by the way, by grace are you saved. In other words, you cannot take this alone. Now, if that part of verse 5 isn't uh, ex mutually exclusive, meaning it's not standalone, how can you take and say, well, by grace are you saved? So the fact that the statement by grace are you saved is parenthetical, meaning the sentence can't even stand alone by itself, tell us that the writer, the writer never intended for this to be a standalone statement. Never. And they say, by, you know how people, by grace are you saved. That is not meant to be a standalone statement. Because people believe that you're saved by grace and grace alone. Grace and nothing else. It's exclusive. The thing is, the word this statement is not exclusive, meaning it's not a stand, a stand alone. It is all inclusive. It's to, what did that mean? Everything about grace is included in that. See, it's not, well, all you need is grace and grace alone. By grace and grace only are you saved. That's it. You're not saved by anything else. Once you're saved, always saved because it's by grace. No, it's one of those things that is all inclusive. It's like this. Uh, everything that all encompasses grace, by that you're saved. So our salvation is not based on anything we've done or even capable of doing. It's solely a matter of God's grace. Now, this is, this is the thing. It, it, it's everything that relates to grace, everything that encompasses grace. Now, here we go. Now, uh, Matthew 7, 21. I don't, I'm scared to look at the clock. I'm really scared. Don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me what time. Not everyone. That saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that is saved by grace. What does it say? But no, we're saved by grace. You don't have to do the will of God to be saved. When you tell, when a person say you're saved by grace, you're taking on that, I think they, they get that uh, uh, cognitive dissonance thing going. They could never deal with the question. They go to something else. That's like, I'm sorry, certain uh, denomination, you, you, go, you get to something, they always try to jerk, jump to something else. Answer that question. They go to their verses that they know. You can, you got to do, do the will of the Father. So, uh, no, by grace are we saved. I don't have to do the, the will of the Father. Oh, yes, we do. So, so the, the, the thing is, is that that's why, see, if you do the will, this is all-inclusive grace right here. Well, how, how, how is that grace? See, we always say grace is what? Unmerited favor. If grace, if we're saved by grace and it's unmerited favor, explain this. But this is talking about grace. <laughs> Hallelujah, I love it. I said this is talking about grace. If you understand the other side of grace, that grace is a divine life, power, ability of God flowing and operating through us in order to give us the supernatural power and ability uh, and for ministry and sanctification. And see, if it's God working in me that's empowering me, so be strong in the Lord, 
he told Timothy. Be, be strong in his grace. Be empowered by his grace. So when I'm empowered by God's grace, I can do his will. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, here we go. Philippians 2. I'm going to 12 and 13. You know it, right, Sister Tiffany? You can preach it, right? Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed. Oh, you don't have to obey. We're not living under the law. We're living under grace. Not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Paul, Paul said, man, I know you guys living right, walking right, and everything else. Not just when I'm looking. You're not just picking up the trash when I'm looking. <laughs> You're picking it up when I'm gone. Work out. Oh, hallelujah. Work out your own salvation. Uh, to those uh, grace only, grace with nothing else, you show them that. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Tell somebody who believes in grace and grace only. Wants to, tell them, ask them about that. Say grace and grace. If I'm saved by grace and I can't lose it, well, I got to work out my own salvation. How? Now, if I'm not saved by my own works, how is it asking me to work out my own salvation? It's going to tell us how through grace. Verse number 13, for it is God. He said, work out your own salvation. When you start working, he said, for it is God which worketh in you. That's the grace and power of God working in you both to will. The lemur. You see, we can only be saved by doing the will, the, the lemur of God. So work out your own salvation. Why? When you working and you got the grace of God working, you don't realize that's God working in you, God's grace uh, working in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. You see, the one side of grace, you didn't earn it. The one side of grace, you couldn't earn it. The one side of grace that says you don't deserve it. God has to initiate it. God has to do it in your life. But you got to seek him. And once you do that and you can get the grace of God by faith. And now God can work in you to keep you on the train. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to skip down some. See that grace alone? See, John, th John 3.16 doesn't make sense if you just believe in grace alone. See, you have to do something. See, if, if, hold on. if it's grace alone, and I know you know this. I'm talking to apostolics that know you have to be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and receive. I, I know you, you apostolic. But you, gotta, you, you have to be able to teach people. So I'm not just teaching you just so you'll know, so you can teach others. Because if it's grace and grace alone, if it's grace, God's unmerited favor. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. Because God is good and he's gracious. That means if it's just that cut and dry, everybody has to be saved. Everybody has to be saved. If everyone is not saved by God's grace, if it's just grace alone, God is a respected person. So if it's grace alone, nothing else, how do you, and everybody's not saved, then God gave it to some and didn't give it to others. That means there's something that we must do. That's the only way this makes sense. Whosoever believeth. So, you know, now, see, when, when you show that and then when you, you explain it this way, so they say, well, then it's not just grace. It's also grace and then I got to believe. So I believe he's the Savior. I'm saved. I believe it. Do you? Yes, I believe he's the Savior. Do you? Yes. Do you believe he's Lord? Yes. 
Is it your Lord? Yes. Then you better do what he says. If he's Lord, if he's your Savior, then you need to do his will. If you're not doing his will, you're not his Savior. Uh, he's not your Savior. That's what uh, Matthew seven twenty one said. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. In other words, don't just say it, show it. If, you, if I am Lord, Lord, you're going to do the will of the Father. And guess what? It's not going to be you that's doing it, by the way. Do you know everything you're doing in God is not you? So stop trying to take the credit. Oh, I, I, I did this today. Oh, now I did that today. Yo, did you? Did God do it through you? That's why Peter was able to say in, now, now I look at the clock. Oh, I said, I'll look at the clock. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> that, that was time. That perfect, I don't know who said it, but that was perfect timing. That was perfect timing. I know I, you was just thanking Jesus anyway, but I'm just having fun with it. I'm, ha I'm having fun with that. So, you know me. I like to have fun. It's 9.04. I thought you needed to know that. As Brother Valley will say, Acts 10, 34 and 35, then Peter opened uh, his mouth and said, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted of him. So that's the only way stuff like that makes sense. I, I gotta, I gotta wrap this thing up. Oh, I have some. Uh, if you, I tell you what, if y'all want the notes afterwards, I'll just, I, I, I want to keep this in one more lesson. So, um, no, I can't, I can't take. See, if I take my time, I will be taking your time also, and I don't want to take your time. So, it, oh my goodness, there's some good stuff in here. I'm trying to see how I can just, great, can, I, one, can I make one more statement and wrap this thing up within 10 minutes so you can get out of here? No, I've got to be earlier than that. Well, sometimes it's okay to get out at 9.15. I had one yes, sir, three, three, three Baptist head nods. But a lot of Pentecostal stiff neckness. <laughs> he know he ain't gonna take ten minutes. He's gonna take fifteen or twenty. <laughs> There's some good points in here. See, you need the grace of God when, when, when you're getting beat up by the devil. It's, it's God's strength. You try to fight the devil on your own strength. He, he just kicks you up and down. He treats you like uh, the sons of Sceva. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. I know what, he, what power he was operating in, but who are you? Don't try operating your own power. I don't care who you think you are in God. 1 Peter 5, verse 8 through 10. I'm going to do this real quickly. Be sober. Yes. Right mind. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Next verse. Talking about the devil beating up on people, right? But, notice that. He, he talked about uh, what we go through, standing steadfast against the devil, resisting him because he's walking around like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. He said, but the grace of all, I mean, see, but the God of all grace 
who have called us into his eternal glory by Jesus Christ, after that he has suffered a while, make you complete. Establish, strengthen, and settle you. He said, hey, the devil will walk around like a roaring lion. He will seek whom he may devour. And, and he said, uh, and, and when we go through stuff, he said, resist in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions. In other words, the adversary will send afflictions in your life. You know what? Stop blaming God for the afflictions we go through. He said, knowing that your brother... That, that your brothers in this world, they have the same type of afflictions, but the God of all grace, hey, he's going to strengthen you. He's going to establish you. You see, it's God's grace that strengthens you. It's God's grace that establishes you, establish, and God's grace that completes you, perfects you when you're going through something, when the enemy comes like a lion. Paul said, Something very similar. As I close with this, this is my closing. Just act like it was Sunday night. Zach is playing. He's playing. Verse number 7, chapter 12, 2 Corinthians. I went backwards. 2 Corinthians 12, 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation. You know, a lot of times people want revelation. They want God to do this and God. I'm telling you, when God's going to do something, give you revelations and give you deep stuff, you better. <laughs> you want some deep things of God, I'm going to tell you what. There's some affliction you're going to have to go through. Don't think you're going to get all that stuff in God and you're going to glory in your flesh. It's not going to happen. And that's why most people can't handle it. People can't handle it. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given to, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. See, sometimes when God is buffeting you, or, or, and I say God, God was allowing, you know, and sometimes the devil's beating me up. The devil's on my back. Boom, boom, boom. Like what we did to the Steelers last year. Bang, bang. Twice we beat them. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> he said, it's coming. It's coming. I'm talking trash. I probably shouldn't be. Does that mean they're going to do it to us there? Oh, well. And, and boom, boom, I just, just an example. I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> he said, lest I be exalted above measure. Sometimes that, oh, here we go. Sometimes the grace of God, oh, sometimes the grace of God is allowing the enemy to come so you don't get too puffed up. No, I just want you unmerited favor. No, this is my grace making sure you're saved. If grace is going to save you, I got to keep you in check. And so I'm not going to beat you up. I'm going to send Satan. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to send his messenger to buffet you. Why? I don't need you up here. Exalting above measure, like he, like Satan tried to be exalted above measure. So God allows some things to come in. And you say, well, what is it? You say, you mean God sick Satan on me? Here we go. Here, here are the things. Remember, he sent something to throw into his flesh. He's going to tell you the things he sent. Here we go. Next verse. See, this is the grace of God. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice. Hey, ain't no devil going to beat up on me. Hey, and it's not even the devil. It's a messenger of the devil. Hey, he's just beating. He's buffeting me. Hey, I, hey what's going on, God? And he asked God three times, this thing get away from me, depart from me. I can't do anything about it. Keep going. I'm really closing. Keep going. And he said unto me, God said, my grace is enough for my strength. My strength is made perfect. Remember that perfect grace we just read about there? In your weakness. So, hey, you want to be saved? You want to be used of God? Hey, my grace is sufficient. What grace? 
What grace? Tell me what was the grace? It was everything he was going through. My grace is sufficient for this. For my strength is made complete in your weakness. It's my grace in your life, and my grace is allowing the enemy to come in. Most gladly, Paul said, therefore, I would rather glory in what? My infirmity. See, there was some infirmities going on. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Keep going. The, his infirmities, everything. Why? See, the power of Christ was resting upon him. You know how you go through things and you said, I ain't enough. I don't feel like fighting anymore. I'm tired of this battle. And you don't understand what's going on. He said, therefore, I take pleasure. You want pleasure, you got to take it. Now, we want to take pleasure in the blessing. We want to take pleasure when we get a raise on a job. We want to take pleasure when we get a new car. We want to take pleasure, hey, when we, oh, hallelujah, I was going to say, when we get that big ring on our fingers. Oh, hallelujah. Paul said, you know what? I'm going to take pleasure in my necessities and my persecutions, and distresses. Why? For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, that was the grace of God operating. He didn't, oh, I guess he, he realized because he said, next, I guess that's the next, you can stop right there. And See, we don't necessarily equate, equate God's grace we, with the sufferings. With the adversary that comes in our life, like a roaring lion. He said, be strengthened with God's grace. See, God's grace is manifold. It's diverse. It works in all sorts of ways. It, it, it's a shift shaper. In other words, it just changes shapes and changes form to adapt to what you need it. To, so when, when it's God's grace that needs you, when you just lost a loved one, God comes by and he strengthens you. When it's God's grace, amen, when you needed to walk and you needed to, 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 to live in him, it's God's grace, amen, when you're praying for somebody or you need to work in ministry and everything, that's God's grace, amen. It's God's grace that keeps you at a certain place from being puffed up. It's his grace working in your life. It's not, won't you stand? It's God's graciousness. We always look at grace on the one side of the coin where every time we flip it, it come up ahead, comes up as head. But why don't we just look at grace in a different manner? You see, when those people talk about grace as God's unmerited favor, and that's all it is, and once saved, always saved, they had to, they had to pretty much do away with most of the Old New Testament. And just read a couple of verses. Pretty much they just read one verse, chapter 2, verse 5, and just the parentheses part. By grace, you're saved. They're right. I'm saved by God's grace, but it's, it's all-inclusive. It's everything that God calls his grace. It's when he allows me to go through trials and tribulations. Amen. It's when God allows me to go through testing. It's when God is disciplining me, trying to get me where I need to be. That's God's grace. You see, God's grace works in many ways. We want to talk about God's grace. Just, I'm talk, the message is discovering God's grace. I have one more session to teach on God's grace. Why don't you just lift your hands where you stand? It's 917. And just give him thanks for his grace. God bless you. Thank you for the extra time. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.